Hi, this is Journey Micro. I'm coming to you from Chicago as usual, and I just got this new video. It's Long Island Audit. A few people sent it to me, and I, I specifically want to thank Sandra, but I did get it sent to me by several other people. I've done prior videos on Long Island Audit, and he shows up in court in Berwyn, and it is absolutely fascinating. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so that's Sean Paul Reyes in the top uh, left, uh, at least on my screen. I guess that's Long Island Audit. I did not know him by his personal name, but he, he has to log in and, and use his real name. So I, I, I'm presuming that's that's Long Island Audit here. President, Your Honor. All right. All right, sir, you have a disorderly conduct. Do you have an attorney? No, Your Honor. Are you employed? Yes, Your Honor. All right. How much do you make a month? Your Honor, I will, I will be proceeding pro se in this matter. Oh. I, I actually like that. It's a bad decision to proceed pro se, but he knows what the judge is doing. She, he's, she's about to ask him questions to see if she can, uh, if he's indigent so she can appoint him counsel. He, he says, no, I don't want to do that. And if you already know you want to go pro se, that, that, that's a wise play. Just, just tell the judge right there and let, let's, let's get, get to the case. Your Honor, I do have um, the state will be asking uh, seeking leave for a couple of requests when you're done addressing his counsel matter. I just he said he's going to proceed pro se. So. Your Honor, if I may say something to the court. Hold on, the state. I acknowledge you're proceeding pro se, state. I didn't know. I was waiting to see if you want to give a uh, pro se uh, admonishments. The state would like to seek leave to request the special condition of bail. Um, due to the occupation of the uh, defendant, <clears throat> the defendant has um, a YouTube account and some of his supporters, followers of the state is not aware of the nature of the relationship with these people, but the complainant witness has been harassed through third party communication and electronic communication consistently, including threats on behalf of their defense, the um, Defended. So the state would like to request um, a scab, including specifically not in reference to our home, but no electronic communication and no third party communication from anyone that may be zealously defending um, the defendant by threatening the witness. Uh, that is uh, completely overbroad. I, I can't believe that the state just asked for that. The judge and they go back and forth and they narrow it down. And I don't know if she ju she just meant that. But she, she's seeking something from no uh, from third parties. So, so what you want an order saying that nobody and none of his viewers um, can say this? He doesn't have control over that. Uh, that that seems a bit too much. But it does get um, narrowed down in scope and, and, and to something that I think is reasonable as we as we proceed. Your Honor, if I may, you're asking for special conditions of bond in that no third party contact with the plan with. No electronic communication and no third party communication. That's it. I'm not requiring, you know, like with home or anything of that nature, just specifically the electronic communication and no third party communication. That he that he not have a third party contact to complain with. Yes, but in no way um, is the state making allegations that the No, 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 no. I'm just trying to yeah. trying to figure out what exactly you're asking. You're yeah. asking that a special condition of bond that indicates that he not have a third party contact or complaining witness. And electronic communication. Contact or complaining witness via electronic or any for any type of communication, correct? Via like yes, via electronic third party for any type of communication. Okay, so now we've narrowed it down to him. I think it was just sort of awkward in the beginning. Uh, because I mean, the the judge doesn't even have the power to order. She can't just. It's like a temporary restraining order on unknown viewers of his. You, I mean, the, you can't do that. You can only limit if the bond condition is going to apply to the defendant and nobody else. So I guess they can say you don't have third party communication or encourage it. That that to me is semi reasonable. Go ahead, Mister. Um, Your Honor, I, I have not had any third party or other okay, communications so, with, okay, so with the complaint. Ask you, my question to you is, 
What's your position on her request for a special I, I object, Your Honor. Okay. Over your objection, I would be <laughs> special conditions upon in that no third that you not have any third party contact the complaining witness in any form, be it electronic, mail, anyway. Uh, I I ge generically object is not going to get it done there. I object this is vague and, and ill-defined would be a good thing, place to start. What, what exactly do you mean by this? And then she would either clarify or agree with you, but just I object on general principles. All right. She, she paused a heartbeat and then said, all right, over your objection, I'm granting the, the condition. Your Honor, so I'm, I'm going to, I am going to grant that request. Okay, Your Honor. I, just, I would just like some. I would just like some clarity, Your Honor. Okay, um, two people cannot talk at once. I understand. So I hadn't even finished saying I was granting the request before everybody else started talking. Understood. Granting the request. Now, Mr. Reyes, you were about to say something. Yes, I would just like clarif um, clarification on because the uh, state is referring to people that I don't no, know. The state, the state did not refer to any. Well, that's what they use their basis for, for the order. Conditions. This is why you need an attorney because they know the, the procedures and they know what a special condition of bond is. An attorney would know exactly what she's talking about. They did not give me any allegations. They did not allege anything on the record. They just asked for a special condition of bond. They made allegations as far as that's they your honor. They did not make allegations to me, okay. sir. Okay. They asked, I grant. But your honor, they did make allegations of threats. I would just like for the records to show that they did make alleg allegations that I could be possibly in a th through a third party contact threats. And I take that seriously, your honor. No, they said uh that the complaining witness has been receiving threats. Okay, Your Honor. Yeah, um, I actually get where he's coming from, and he's saying I I don't appreciate the insinuation that I'm doing this because I'm not, and he may not be, but it's it's the wrong way to go. You say you what you're what you want to do is clarify what what are we doing going forward because this order doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That's a fair thing to say. All right, I'm granting the special condition. So what that means is you cannot have anybody and i'm not saying you have done it i'm just saying for future reference you cannot have anybody contact this complaining witness through any form of communication anything that you say that could be misinterpreted or looked at as if you're asking someone to do it is what i'm saying you can't do all right this is for the future understood all right now, state, you have something to say? Yes, Your Honor, I just wanted to acknowledge that the complaining witness, Ruth uh, Sabia, Saba, I'm pretty sure I'm turning up her name, Dash Green is in court. And if the, um, and the state requests that the complaining witness be excused from court for all matters until it is deemed necessary by the state. Okay, Mr. Reyes. Uh, Your Honor, I have no objection on that. I would just ask the court to, on this misdemeanor complaint. No, 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 no. The only question before you is your position on the complaining witness being excused. I, I, okay, I, I, I object. Okay, you object? <laughs> Correct. What's the basis of your objection? Um, I have the right to face my accuser, Your Honor. She's the complaining That's witness. That's trial. Yeah, the, the judge point is saying right there, uh, it's at trial, and and he does. He's absolutely correct on that. And honestly, I, I don't blame him for objecting at this point, but he looked silly after he just said no objection 10 seconds ago. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the state said, the state intends to, to call them at trial. They have to, to make the case. But he doesn't know that. Uh, and and what the state requested is is can the witness be excused and unless the the state deems necessary and uh, I think that's sort of too broad a request I I know what they mean by it they mean that they don't have to show up until trial um, and they have to have them at trial they can't make their case but but he wants clarification on that and he is correct he, there's constitutional right to confront your accusers trial that is a trial you do have the right to face your your accuser at trial. This is not trial. This is status getting ready for trial. So on that basis, 
I will grant the state's request that the complaining witness is excused until trial. Now, you were about to say something else, Mr. Reyes? Um, Your Honor, I was um, arrested on the, this misdemeanor complaint. Uh, the complaint is Ruth Siaba Green for disorderly conduct. Um, I was originally arrested for felony eavesdropping. That was what I was originally arrested for. I cut a lot of this stuff out. He does a preamble. And again, I'll put a link to his video in the description below. Go ahead and look at it. He he does some pre-work and and some stuff that I can't tell if it's related to this appearance or not. And and more stuff afterwards. And and go ahead and take a look at it. But he he goes on and on about how he was uh, arrested for eavesdropping, but then they changed it to disorderly conduct. I, I got to tell you, it's a, it's a non-starter. Uh, you're arrested, You're arrested for, for some of that conduct. They can change the charge. They observed what they observed. Yeah, they, they could charge you with one thing, take it to the prosecutor. And the prosecutor said, no, nah, I don't like this. We're going to charge it under a different code provision. As long as we have the conduct, um, does it meet elements of certain offenses? They they can they, they amend charges all the time, but he doesn't know these sorts of things. Or uh, 720 ILCS. Um, that was the original complaint against me. But for some reason, it was changed to a disorderly conduct. I'm asking the court to find probable cause on this complaint. All right, so let me stop you here. Let me stop you here. You don't. <laughs> uh, judge explains it to him here, but that is fantastic. He's asking the court to find probable cause against him. What he means to say is, I dispute this. I want to file a motion to dismiss. This, this case is nonsense, although this isn't the right moment for it. But when he says, I want you to find probable cause, he thinks he's saying that. I want the court, well, first of all, this is a misdemeanor. So I, I, there is, that's not appropriate avenue on a misdemeanor. That's appropriate avenue on a felony. Okay, number one. Number two, you would not want the court to find anything, any probable cause, because <laughs> that means that they're saying that there's evidence or possible evidence that you committed a crime. So you never want the court to find probable cause against you. But if you had an attorney, he would explain that to you and you would know that you were just asking for something that was not in your best interest. Yep. Well, I believe, right. I believe that there's so, no problem with that. I, so. I understand what you believe, <laughs> but I'm telling you what the reality is. Now, I am not granting that. This is not the appropriate avenue for that request. What else do you have? I have nothing else, Your Honor. I just, uh, I'm, I'll be filing a yeah. motion to dismiss. Okay. Okay, now, just file it. The issue of discovery. You're going to have to receive discovery, um, but I do need to admonish you about proceeding without an attorney. And I don't have my book with me. All right. Um, I'm going to do the admonishments on the next court day because I don't have the, the complete admonishments with me. But uh, my. If I may, Your Honor, and just my concern about um, not doing the admonishments today, uh, the next the next part of the case is going to be discovery. And I'm hesitant about, I have to go ahead and get communication. Okay, okay. So, anyway, so I'm hesitant of even doing anything with him without him having those admonishments to go back and communicate with the defendant directly. Okay. We will pass it and I will go get my book and I will admonish him. Um, about proceeding without returning. So we'll that, that made a lot of sense. She she just wanted to skip the admonishments because she didn't have them on hand and she, she was going to read them to him, but she just didn't have them. The prosecutor says, hey, we're about to start discovery. And if he's not admonished, then he's then he's going to maybe gum up the works with that and say, I wasn't admonished. I didn't know this, that, or the other thing. So um, to the judge's credit, she says, you know what? I'll pass it and find the admonishments and do it. You're right, prosecutor. We'll pass it. Court is back in session, recalling the case of Sean Paul Reyes. All right, do I have my court reporter? Do I have my state? Are you back? Hello, oh, Your Honor. This is State Attorney Mariella Guzman. My partner, Reese, stepped away. <laughs> All right. I'm here, Judge. All right. So, Mr. Reyes, I need to admonish you since you say you, since you, say you are going to go pro se. You have the right to represent yourself, but before we proceed, I must be certain that you understand what is occurring, what your rights are. In order to do so, I'm going to have to ask you a couple of questions. A, a couple of questions, all right? Okay, Your Honor. Now, first, do you understand what your charge is? Correct. 
Do you understand what you're trying to do? Yes or no? Yes, that's correct. All right. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, yeah, correct doesn't mean yes. <laughs> he does it again here a little bit. I've I've seen it. He he does it. He does it another time. I I I mean that's that's just basic stuff, but it it makes you look silly. And you're charged with disorderly conduct. The allegation is that Sean Paul Reyes normally used a device to to video and audio record conversation between city hall employees and Bourbon residents without their consent after being verbal, verbally advised to stop recording, along with advising there were signs posted throughout the city hall saying that recording is not allowed and that such recording alarmed the city hall employees. Do you understand the nature of that allegation? Um, I understand the allegation as written. I don't understand how it applies to the law, but okay. okay. All right. So this is a mis this is a class A misdemeanor, and you can be sentenced up to one to three hundred sixty four days in Cook County Jail. Five okay, so she's going through admonishments, and he wants to represent himself. So the little dig, and I don't understand how it applies to law. I get it. You think that it's a bad charge, and maybe you're right. Maybe you have the merits on your side, but that's the wrong thing to say if you want to proceed pro se, which is what he wants to do, because you're saying I don't understand how the law applies. The judge doesn't do it here, but you're, you're giving her an opening to flip and say, ah, I, I think we need to assign counsel because you just you just said you don't don't understand. I'm up to twenty five hundred dollars or subject to jail and fine. You understand that? That's correct. So now you know the possible penalty. Uh, it's a yes or no, buddy. Yes or no question. That's correct. Is non-responsive. She lets it go, but I wouldn't. See the issue? Yes, Your Honor. And you know that you have the absolute, absolute right to represent yourself, right? Yes, Your Honor. And if you're unable to afford an attorney, I can appoint a, a public defender to represent you. You understand that? I do understand that. Right? And you still wish to proceed or to represent yourself? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. You have been advised of uh, the post pay rights. I, I will have a question, Your Honor. When... Okay. So understand, I can't answer any legal questions for you. So you get no help from me whatsoever <laughs> legally. So if it's a question you ask and it's a legal question, I'm going to advise you that I cannot hand, I cannot answer that. You need representation. All right? Okay. So just, you know, when I say that, when you ask me questions, or if you ask me questions, that's why I'm saying it. All right? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Go ahead. What's your question, Mr. Ray? Um, my question would be, as I'm not familiar with um, the Illinois, uh, the Cook County uh, system, I would just ask, is there a way for, is it is there a way to file a motion electronically in your courtroom as it is closed due to coronavirus? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, if you knew what you were doing, you would know the answer to that question or figure it out. And uh, yes, it's procedural. Maybe, maybe she could point the way, but you, you you're just displaying that, that you know nothing there. I, I don't ask judges how to how to file motions. I've been doing this a long time. And, and you know what? The procedures change and I have to figure it out. I would call the – in this in this circumstance, I would call the clerk of the, the circuit court and say, hey, how do you – or email or go on their website and say, what's the procedure now because I can't walk in and file. This, this isn't uh, free law advice from the judge time. A lot of times a judge might answer a question like this, but she is not going to do it. And she isn't mean, but like they really shouldn't have to. And she just admonished them. And it's really annoying. <laughs> oh, that's something that an attorney would know. Yeah. Okay. I'll figure it out. Don't you worry about it. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Is that by agreement, Mr. Reyes? January 26th. Mm -hmm. What status of discovery are you going to receive from the state? Uh, if you would allow me to check my calendar really quick, Your Honor. Yeah. Thank you. January 26th is fine. All right, guys. So you just watched my first court appearance in Berwyn, Illinois. I want to make this crystal clear. I am not, I have not, and I will not ever instruct anyone or ask anyone to contact the Berwyn City Administrator, Ruth Siaba Green, on my behalf.
That right there is arguably a violation of his bond condition, just as the judge stated. She said, if, if you, anything you say that could be interpreted that way. On its face, he's saying, don't do it. But a lot of people might take that as, as uh, uh, an indication to do it. And the reason why is because he names, uh, names her specifically and gives it in the video. And I just, I, I don't think that'll become an issue, but it's a poor idea. It's a poor idea. It's certainly arguably a violation of his bond condition right now. I, if I was prosecuting it, I would not, I would not follow that. I'm being honest, but it's, it's, it's not a good thing to do based on the court appearance he had today. I don't know if this, if he's done anything or encouraged any of that stuff. He says, he says he hasn't, I'll take him at his word. I mean, I just don't know those facts. Uh, and, and I just wanted to give a little bit more here to, for his side of it. And, and here he looks sincere in, in, in really saying that he does not want that. We all know the reason for those special bail conditions that were put on prohibiting third party contact. There was never any third party contact and there never will be, but they put those conditions on me to try and scare me into being silent and to scare. Now that, again, that's just silly. There, there was never any contact and there never will be. You don't know the future, number one. Also, I highly suspect that there was prior contact and that the, and that the prosecutor probably has, has possession of it. So it's very likely that somebody contacted and said something inappropriate. Or, or I mean, I don't know. I don't have the evidence. But he certainly doesn't know. And he's, and he's just making this blanket statement. It's never happened before. It'll never happen again. It won't happen in the future. Uh, you can say I didn't encourage it. That's fine. You 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 can you can say that, but you you, you don't know if that happened. I bet it did. Scare all of you into being silent. They want to silence us, and I will not allow it. Not now, not ever. If her threat claims are to be believed, I want to publicly condemn those who would make such threats. Okay, so that's good. He he's saying I, I would publicly condemn it, and he he seems. My guess is he's sincere there, as as he says that. So he's really not encouraging that. But although I don't know, but th the statement also uh, sort of contradicts his prior thing that it never happened before. He said, "Well, this never happened before, and it will never happen in the future. But if it did happen, I condemn it." <laughs> it's just. It's not a good. Well, there you have it. I thought that was absolutely fascinating. He actually overall did better than I thought, but at times um, just did not well at all. Do well at all. It's not going to hurt him in this case, but you 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 just look silly when you ask the the judge to find probable cause. When what you intend to do is say you dispute uh, the. the basis for your case well no kidding you pled not guilty and there was a time and place for that either a motion to dismiss which later he says he's going to file or at trial there there are other times but but um thinking that you're going to force the judge into in, into uh, a probable cause finding that they're uncomfortable with and then they're just going to dismiss it it's just silly <laughs> You're not you're not getting anywhere with that. He uh, he also says later he says he says well if my motion to dismiss isn't granted it won't be. <laughs> and you probably could an attorney could probably get it done. I don't know. I don't know the underlying merits of this case, but it is it is a tough case to charge, and there are First Amendment issues. So I don't know the facts, and, and you know maybe there is a good motion to dismiss here. Maybe there is a good defense in this case. Maybe there's no good prosecution, and that might be where it ends up. But it's very unlikely to, to get done with you uh, driving the car. I'll tell, I'll tell you that right now. Um, he's like, well, let, let, let me go lose my motion to dismiss and then I'll get an attorney in for trial. All right. Well, you and, and miss a huge opportunity um, and also say silly things and make admissions and potentially violate bond conditions and make admissions on, on YouTube right, right now. I'm not scouring it for that, but uh if you're facing this stuff, I, I wouldn't be doing a bunch of stuff here. I, you know, the prosecutor can go through this and see if there's anything they can use against him. Who was it? Um, I can't remember the auditor. I did one on an auditor down in Florida who, who basically went on and I said it at the time. I, I did a video on, on his thing and he basically comes on and does a YouTube video and admits an offense. 
Yeah, you know, and it wasn't a huge offense, but it's 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 it just mind-bogglingly stupid. Uh, that's what he did. I didn't see him make that sort of admission here. I did see him say at the end uh, uh, things that that I I think are arguably in violation of his bond. I'm not saying they are for sure, but like I, I think you could make the case, and that that's not helping his cause. It's interesting. I don't have access to these court calls, although I am in Illinois, and I guess unless I tried to get on Zoom, which I which I wouldn't. I'm too close to it. But if he makes another video for his next court appearance, I will definitely follow up on it. Here at Law Talk, we like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court. And every once in a while, and completely by accident, I assure you, you might learn something. Thanks for watching.